Hey, what's going on everybody? This is John J Gaming on the mic here, coming at you with a brand new episode of the Urum Team Builder Dynasty here on NCAA 14 featuring that college football revamp. And we got another great game in store for us here, man. This time we are hosting the number 10th ranked Michigan State Spartans. They are currently undefeated so far this season. We're 5-1, and one, but we're undefeated in conference play still. We Corso is going to be rocking with them, but we're very similar teams. B+, plus, B+, plus, B. Meanwhile, we got a B-plus overall squad with B on the offense, A- minus defense. But... What are we going to do with quarterback? That's something that I kind of discussed last episode. So let's go ahead and talk about that for a little bit. So what I ended up doing is that I ended up... I went back and forth on this to be honest with you guys. But I am deciding to keep CJ Patton at starting quarterback. As of right now, you know, CJ will usually not have as bad of a day as he did right there. And... You know, still a very good passer, 88 throw powers, 90 throw accuracy. He just had a bad day, but best believe he will have a short leash. I like what I saw from Jeff Wheatley overall. You know, he's a guy that can come in, you know, he can do some special things. I think he'll be a great starting quarterback for us in the future. But it is good to know that we do have somebody waiting in the wings just in case things do go wrong. But with that being said, let's go ahead and not waste any more time. Let's go on and take the number 10 team in the nation, the Michigan State Spartans. It's going to be a good one, man. So make sure you smash that like button. Hit subscribe if you have to be brand new as well. Let's get it, man. I'm excited for this. Let's go. All right, man. So another top 25 game goes ahead. We get it underway here. And listen, if we want to win this game, we got to be off to a better start than what we did against Ohio State. You know, we can't be keep getting away with these slow starts that we're having. And, you know, we got a third and long that we have to deal with right now. Got to convert on this first down here. As we drop back, we throw over to the left hand side. Get it out to Patrick Starr. And does end up picking up the first down. It's a gain of 13. Is now another first and 10 coming up for us. This time, good trying to go ahead. Run a little bit of play action here. And that's also going to be good for a first down here as well. Derek Blue there picking up a gain of 16. So right now, first drive for Earlham. The offense is moving pretty well. Although we do have another first down that we need to try and convert, but we throw behind Patrick Starr, and we will be forced to go ahead and punt this football away. And that means we will have to give the football back to the Michigan State Spartans with Sheldon. He breaks multiple tackles, and this is turning into a foot race down the sideline and will end up being caught from behind by David Smith. If that dude was a little bit faster, I swear that man was going to get ready and take that thing to the crib. Let's see if we can recover on defense, though. A few plays later, do get him to a third and five as Massey looking to throw towards the end zone. And it's a little bit overthrown. It will be considered an incomplete pass. And so with that, that does mean that we will go ahead and see Michigan State take the field. Go ahead and try and take a field goal. The kick will be up. And it is good. So the Michigan State Spartans off that 50-yard run ends up turning into a field goal. As we check out this studio update. As Penn State does narrowly defeat Maryland. Try to keep them alive in the Big Ten East race of definitely a dominant division. I'm, I'm surprised we were not in that division for sure. But that being said, though, offense is back out on the field. It wasn't a bad drive, but could always do better if it doesn't end up with any points. So with that being said, hopefully this is a better drive for us going forward here as CJ Patton will drop back over to the right hand side. Got a man downfield, gets it out to Jake Elliott. Nice scramble by CJ Patton and it goes for a first down. And a third and long coming up here for Earlham. CJ dropping back. Patton trying to throw it out. Was maybe expecting Patrick Starr to go out on the slant pattern. That was not happening. And it turns 
into an interception for the Michigan State Spartans. And that's how this first quarter ends. It's a pretty defensive affair overall despite a couple of big plays. We're still only down three to nothing after one quarter of play. So with that being said, we'll go ahead and get the second quarter going. And hopefully, once again, we have a better possession this time. We did get him to go free and out after we did throw that interception. But we got to be a little bit more careful with the football, you know. CJ Patton does certainly have a much shorter leash. You know, given that he did have five turnovers last game. As we throw over the middle, get it out to Patrick Starr, who does end up going ahead. And picking up the first down here. Second catch of the day for Patrick Starr. As now we got another first and ten coming up. CJ going to go ahead and go ahead and run for another. You know, close to a first down marker. CJ not known for the running, but getting some good runs here. Average 17 yards off of two carries. Nothing bad about that whatsoever. As on second and short now, we hand it off to Daniel Carrington. Who does end up picking up the first down for realsies. As we trying to set up a play action now. Now that the running has been going pretty well for us. CJ looking to the right. Going to try to scramble out of there. Throws it at the last second. In order to go ahead and avoid the sack. But that does mean we still have to deal with third and long. Trying to set him up with the halfback screen. Gets it out to Daniel Carrington. But will be well short. Of that first down marker, it'll be interesting to see if we actually decide to go for it. And our coaching staff actually grows a set of balls. We're actually going to go ahead and go for it here. Fourth and free. CJ looking around. Get it out to Patrick Starr. He had the first down. But he drops it. He drops the first down. You hate to see it. Oh, my goodness. So now we give the football back to Michigan State after turning the ball over on downs. You hate to see it as the Spartans look to go ahead and make this a two possession game here as Massey, his quarterback scramble, gets him into Earlham territory. Is now second and 11 now, couple plays later. Massey doing yet another run right up the gut and it's another first down for the Spartans. Reggie Massey just having a difficult time containing him in the pocket as they continue to run it. No, it's a fake pass play, but the pressure gets to him and forces a bad pass. And that's one thing that we have been doing a good job of. Reggie Massey has not been able to pass the football whatsoever. One for seven so far. And how about this? Chris Ty going to get his hands on the football. We get a turnover on our own as Finn Otis. Wins one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, forces the fumble. And the ball is back in our hands here once again. Let's see if we can take advantage of the turnover as Patton goes to work. Going in the pocket, throws it out to Patrick Starr, who was open out in the middle of the field. That is good for a first down. Is now another first and 10 coming up here. Going to hand it off. No, CJ Patton's going to keep it. He ends up breaking a couple of tackles. Does not end up sliding down, but still hangs on to the football, though. That's a gain of six. And we're getting into the last three minutes here of this first half. And we're still looking for our first points of the game here as we hand off to Carrington. He's got some space up the middle of the field. We're starting to gash him a little bit here. It took some time, but our, the staple of our offense is finally starting to get going, and that's running the football. That is our bread and butter. Is Patton looking to drop back, trying to throw it over the left-hand side, was looking for Jake Elliott, but Damian Atkins, he deflects the pass away. And yet another third and long coming up here. As CJ dropping back throws it over to Patrick Starr who picks up the first down that's a gain of 10 on that one so first and 10 coming and we go ahead now we are in the red zone for the first time today trying to make sure that we actually get points this time around you know but that's incomplete though and it leads to second and 10 now this time going with a free wide set tight end is also in the game we throw short to Patrick Starr, who gets lit up like a Christmas tree, but still hangs on to the football, though. Third and short, so we can still go with the running game if we want to do that. 
as Carrington gonna go ahead and it was a tough run you know didn't have a lot of space to work with there but we did find a way to pick up the first down drive will continue this time under a minute left read option CJ gonna walk himself into the end zone touchdown Earlham and the Earlham Quakers take the lead here with one minute left and that's how we go into halftime up seven to three but the second half coming shortly all right guys so welcome back to the second half of this game between Michigan State and your Earlham Quakers and we actually start the second half on a high note. We force a free now, and they will be going ahead and putting the football over to us as Frank Bowers. He's got some space on the outside. Can we get that last block? No, sir. But still a pretty good gain there, gain of 23 yards. And so our first drive of the second half is going to start in Michigan State territory. You'll love to see it, and you also... Love to see another catch from Patrick Starr. He's been finding a way to get himself open consistently throughout the course of this game. Definitely a breakout candidate as Patton dropping back. Grind the throw it over the middle, but Eric Sprinkle Jr. could not locate the football as deflected away. Tried to utilize the size, but the awareness just not there. As we'll run the football here on 2nd and 10 after we try to take that deep shot and pick up a gain of 6. Daniel Carrington trying to get that yards per carry average up. It's now over 3 yards a carry as we'll go to him again this time on a 3rd and 4. And Carrington with another 1st down here as well. And so drive still continues. You know, even though we started in plus territory, this is a longer drive and expect as we go to right hand side, it's nearly intercepted by James Butler. You hate to see it. I thought we had him open, but close out in the last second as we go on a second and 10 now, trying to throw towards the end zone. And I'm surprised that's not some kind of pass interference. Looks like Patrick Starr was interfered with. But nothing we can do now as we have third and long coming. CJ throwing over the middle. Gets it to Derek Blue. Was at the first down marker, but they will not give it to him. And Earlham actually going to settle for a field goal. It will extend the lead, though. So we're now up 10 to 3, but it has certainly been a very defensive affair. They say defense wins championships, and that is no secret here. Both these teams coming. They both teams have pretty good defenses, man. So I'm somewhat not surprised that it's happening, but it is what it is, though. As there's a quick screen over to Lewis, breaks almost breaks the tackle, but will end up getting forced down after a seven-yard gain. It's now third and four coming up here. Couple plays later, Massey. In the shotgun, going to hand it off to Sheldon, who takes it, tries to take it out the left-hand side, but is met by Chris Ty. And once again, the Michigan State Spartans have to go ahead and punt this football back over to us. You absolutely love to see it as the punt is officially underway now. Frank Bowers set to go ahead and return. It makes a man miss. Trying to take it upfield and is brought down at around the 40-yard line. Frank Bowers really helping out in terms of making sure we're getting some really good quality field position. It's now first and 10. Carrington trying to carry it upfield. He's brought down, but it looks like we're actually going to get a call go our way. It's going to be a face mask penalty. And they're calling it on John Everett. It's an automatic first down here as well. So now we're in Michigan State territory. And we'll hand off to Carrington again. And this time, a much more successful carry, even without the penalty. A gain of eight. As we got second and two coming up here. Going to hand it off to Daniel Carrington. He's got some space to work with. He's up field. It's turning into a foot race. And he's gone. Touchdown, Earlham, 35-yard touchdown. And Earlham extends the lead, make it a 17-3 ball game. 
as Michigan State now, they are scrambling a little bit here. They must come up with a response. They got to get six points here, a field goal. Not really helping out the situation much whatsoever as Massey breaks off one tackle. He's trying to get to the sideline, but can't get to the outside and will be left just short of that first down marker as it leads to third and inches. Let's see if they run the football with Massey once again. Lewis moving into motion. Massey thrown over the right-hand side. Gets it to Lewis. A rare completion for Michigan State. And it goes for a first down. Is now another first and ten coming up here. But wait a minute. Somebody moved on that line of scrimmage. Who was it? It's on Michigan State. They're calling the guard number 62. And that's going to back them up a little bit. But... It still is a first down here. Oh, is Massey going to go ahead and pitch it over to Kerry Sheldon? But Nate Hunt, the best player on this football team, hands down, blows that play up. And now a second and 19 here as Nate Hunt does go ahead and make another tackle. But Michigan State does get back to close to the original line of scrimmage. But still a third and long here. Is Massey trying to throw over the middle, finds Robinson, just absolutely tattoos David Smith, and it's a 30-yard gain for Aaron Robinson. What a time to get your very first catch in this ball game as they hand off to Sheldon once again, trying to follow the blockers, and got to give credit to that Michigan State offensive line. They moved the pile just a little bit as we probably will go into our last play here of this third quarter we only send two guys massey open but he's drops it you hate to see it as a quarterback you get the first down your receiver still drops it though and starting the fourth quarter michigan state will have to go for fourth downs we'll see how that goes so let's go ahead now and get this fourth quarter officially underway. And starting from the get-go, Michigan State, they got to go for it here on fourth down. But they run out of times, though, as Reggie Massey is going to end up getting sacked in the backfield. Look at that defensive line just absolutely harassing that poor quarterback. And so now our offense is going to go ahead and take over here. But... We throw an interception on our own. Wow. So we got to go ahead now. The door is kept slightly open for Michigan State. The number 10 team in the nation, by the way. And we just gave them positive field position. And now first and 10 coming up here is Massey trying to get it out to Sheldon on the outside. Able to get a huge gain of 14 yards. And it's a first down as now another first and 10 coming up here. Massey dropping back. Going to go ahead and scramble himself a little bit more. Lit up by looks like Chris Tyva came up and made the tackle. But somehow hangs on to that football steal. That's a tough kid. And it leads to a second and short coming up here as Massey going to hand off again to Sheldon. Sheldon pushing forward to about the nine yard line. It gets them into a first and goal situation. The first one of the day for Michigan State as it leads to third and goal coming up here. As now Massey dropping back on a throw it over to the left hand side, but it's intercepted. MJ Granson coming up with the football in the end zone. And how about the defense stepping up and making a play? to make sure this game stays a two-possession ball game. You'll love to see it. And now our offense comes back onto the field. We'll see if they can be a little bit more cautious this time around. You know, we don't even have to score on this drive. That's the crazy part. We just have to make sure we don't turn the football over again like we did last time around as Patton. Going to hand it off, get it out to Daniel Carrington. He is really Storing the heat up here, y'all. Gain of 13 as it leads to first and 10. CJ Patton going to go ahead and drop back. Throw it over and get it over to the left-hand side. Gets it out to Robert Price Jr. in order to pick up a gain of 5. Is now sec 
Couple plays later here. Third and short coming up. Gonna try to run for this first down. If we can get this first down, we can start to try to run out the crack a little bit. But of course, we're gonna be stuffed. And we're gonna have to punt this football back here. You know, don't wanna obviously go for it in our own territory when we have the lead already at this point. We do end up running a little bit of time, but not as much as I've wanted to because Michigan State, they will still have all of their timeouts and they're gonna get a pretty good return downfield here too. And that was exactly what the Spartans needed if they have any chance of winning this game at this point. So yeah, if Michigan State doesn't score on this drive, it's gonna be barbecue chicken. We're gonna end up winning this game as Massey dropping back on a throw over the middle, get it out to Edwards. And Edwards is going to pick up a gain of eight himself. As at least his second and short now. King Ray, fifth tackle. Massey dropping back. And he's going to scramble once again. King Ray can't finish the play. MJ Granson able to go ahead and eventually bring him down. And, yet, and it's yet another first down for the Spartans. And they're in Earlham territory too. Massey going to the out route looking for Luke Lewis. And does end up getting him to, not a first down, but does at least get out of bounds to at least make sure the clock is not running, at least for the time being. But, third and one. Let's see what Massey decides to do right here. Going to be a run play? Yes, it is. It's the Sheldon who's stuffed behind the line of scrimmage. And the last hope for the Michigan State Spartans Lies on this play right here. Can they pick up the yard needed to keep the hopes alive for the Spartans? Massey, throw it over the middle. It's incomplete. You'll love to see it, baby. Let's go. Fourth down, we get him off the field. But then, of course, we can't pick up a first down of our own. That should have been the end of the game. But because we don't pick up any first downs ourselves, Michigan State, we give them yet another opportunity. So here we go now. First, third and short coming up here once again. Massey in the shotgun trying to make an audible real quick. Massey thrown over the middle, gets it out to Lewis. And Lewis ends up picking up a gain of seven. And it leads to another first and ten coming up here. Massey dropping back again. This time throwing down the middle of the field. Tries to get it out to Greg Green. But it looks like Frank Bowers comes up in there and breaks the play up. Shout out to our secondary. Making sure that long completion wasn't made. Although we will have a long completion on the very next one though. Where Anthony Lewis able to make the catch down the sideline for a gain of 20. Is now first and 10 again. Massey. Dropping back, throwing a right-hand sign, gets it out to Lewis. Lewis able to go ahead and pick up 13 there as it leads to another first and 10 coming up, this time in the red zone. Massey looking around, trying to throw it towards the end zone. It's overthrown. Incomplete pass, although the coverage was pretty solid. Is now second and 10 coming up after the long incompletion. Massey throwing towards the end zone. Green is going to be just marked at the one yard line. Although Michigan State would likely not have much trouble getting to the end zone here as what are we the next play? Aaron Robinson finds the end zone. At least makes it a seven point game. At least makes it a little bit more interesting. But none of that will matter if we are able to go ahead and recover the onside kick and we will do exactly that courtesy of Patrick Starr and we will be able to kneel it down and we will also go ahead and win this game by a final score of 17 to 10 loved how our defense played the offense still needs to improve significantly if we want to be taken seriously at the national level but listen, man, it's really hard to complain, though, when you get a top 25 win. Actually, make that a win against a top 10 team in the nation. This is certainly a tougher conference than the American. But so far, we are certainly holding our own here in the Big Ten.
Alright man, so I'll tell you what, it was certainly not pretty whatsoever. But that being said though, man oh man was this something to remember. We ended up winning this game by a final score of 17 to 10. We don't win with the same finesse like we've done in the past you know, year or two, but we still find a way to get the job done. You know, we still ended up winning this game and we get another top 25 victory to add on our resume. Plus, we're still undefeated in conference play. Checking out the stats for our guys, and once again, CJ Patton was not impressive whatsoever. 14 for 27, 150 yards, and two picks, although he did not cop the football when running with it on the ground. As for our ground game, though, Daniel Carrington, 20 free carries, 118 yards, and a tub. Same thing for CJ Patton. He did actually find the end zone this time around as well. Then for receivers, again, no passing touchdowns for us here today, but Patrick Starr's been doing some good work for us still. He ended up winning the team in t catches and yards, and it was six catches for 65 yards. And finally, it was the defense that really did its job here today. We ended up, you know, great defensive performance. Uh, Chris Ty ended up with 10 total tackles on the day. That led all Earlham defenders, you know, seven of which were TFLs, even had two sacks. My guy was simply all over the place. And in general, we did a really good job getting to this quarterback. Jamie Jenkins had multiple sacks too. Uh, we also had sacks from Robert Abraham, Ben Otis, and Chris Rogers to go with it as well. MJ Granton, our senior cornerback, he gets himself an interception, which I do really like to see. And Finn Otis gets himself a forced fumble, which Chris Ty does end up recovering. So, again, a really nice job for our squad overall. Something that I like to see, even though it wasn't the prettiest victory for us here today. So after the game, we go ahead and check out what we did on the recruiting front, and we get ourselves a few more sound recruits as well. Marcus Stiegel, Joe Madsen, and James Turner are all coming to the squad, man, so we get three more recruits to add to the team, and you'll really like to see that. We're a little more than halfway through the season now. We're 6-1, and one, and we play against our third top 25 team in a row in the next episode next time out we got to go on the road go up against nebraska cornhuskers and it, it's a difficult schedule man but we're we're dealing it with it pretty well thus far but with that being said i hope you enjoyed this video if you did smash that like button hit subscribe if you have to be brand new by the way this is john j gaming on the mic signing off and i'm hoping you're all out there having a wonderful day take care everybody